By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we have reached round number four here at the Often Troll Cup. And in round number four, we have David with his Atok deck taking on Aryan. And Aryan is playing a Solkanar deck. So that's blue, black, and red. Now, before I dive into these deck decks, I've got beautiful deck pictures of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip this, maybe check out the deck decks later, and go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find the timestamp. Well, multiple timestamps actually, but one of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the games. And before you do that, I'd like you to I'd like to ask you to first hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Thank you very much because it turns out when you ask for subscribers, you actually get more. Anyway, I'm now going to start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of David and his Atog Brood. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of David. So this is an Atog deck, right, with robots. We see trikes in here, Suchis in here, four Atogs. Maybe it's good to first kind of focus on Atog. So Atog is that creature from Antiquities, one red and one for a one-two creature. If you sacrifice an artifact, it gets plus two, plus two. And this makes this creature super good because you can turn it sideways. And then if you have a lot of artifacts like Ankh of Mistress, Black Vices, Mana Volts, cheap artifacts, that are all in this deck, you always have that threat of, okay, if you don't block it, that's fine, but I'm just gonna sack like four artifacts, five artifacts, and deal 10, 11 points of damage with one swing. Do you really wanna do that? If you block, okay, but I can sack my tap mana vault to maybe, you know, kill your Mishra's factory that you wanna use as a blocker. So it's, Atog is one of these cards that always puts you as an opponent in an uncomfortable position, you know, in, in a catch-22 scenario. The best thing usually to do is just to destroy Atok on site or to try to deal damage to it during the opponent's turn because then, and with the opponent I mean the player that's actually playing the Atok, because then when they sack the artifacts at least they cannot use it against you to deal damage to you if you know what I mean, right? Um, what I really like with these decks is that they're playing Chain Lightnings and Lightning Bolts but they're playing it in combination with Triskelion and Triskelion is basically a very expensive Lightning Bolt as well. I mean in decks like this where almost every card is going to hurt your opponent, that trike in, in the mid game can actually secure the deal. You know, your opponent's probably really low. You drop a trike with three counters on the trike, you can instantly remove those. So it's like a lightning bolt. And I know a lightning bolt for six may sound bad, but in a deck like this, it is really good. You know, also because you've got your mana vaults to ramp up. And of course, you don't have to take those counters off. But what I'm saying with the deck packed with so much direct damage, it's usually really good. What I also um, find really annoying to play against, because I've played against these decks, it's really tough for my for my deck that I usually play, my mono blue deck, is the Ankh of Mishra Black Vice. Because, you know, Black Vice punishes you for having too many cards in hand. So for each card above four, you take a damage. If you have seven cards in hand during your upkeep, you take three points of damage. So you want to play out your, your hand, right? To do that, you need to play out lands. That's where Ank of Mishra comes in. Ank of Mishra punishes you for playing out land. So if you play out a land, you take two points of damage. It is super annoying, right? So it's it's like you're again, you're stuck in this catch-22 scenario where you cannot make a decision. By the way, if you don't know what, what I mean by catch-22, read the book. It's a really good book. Okay, this is the deck by David, and now we're going to check out uh, the deck by his opponent, Aryan. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Aryan. So um, I've called this the Swamp King, but maybe I should call it the White Swamp King because there are a lot of white cards in here as well. We have the whole white control package in this deck. So four swords, four disenchants, one balance. Yeah, these cards are just really good at solving problems and it's super tempting to put these cards in every single deck, right? And I understand the choice because like disenchant and I think also swords are going to be super cards against a deck of David in the matchup today. Now, when we look at this deck, this is really more a mid-range, a value deck in comparison to the Atog deck, right? The Atog deck wants to just every single turn deal damage to the opponent, wants to go very fast. This deck is not slow, but it's a little bit slower and it goes a little bit more on value. It's got a lot of big creatures in here. We see four Sangir Vampires, two beautiful Juzam Jins, and of course the Solkanar. Solkanar, I think, is a really good creature, right? Five mana for a five-five with only upsides. So it's got Swamp Walk, which is actually pretty relevant because 
a lot of people splash demonic tutor mind twist meaning they play with dual lands with black in them and that means that the soul canar is unblockable all of a sudden now in this matchup that's not going to count because the atok bots deck is only red but i just want to mention it just to keep that in the back of your mind the other ability that it has is that you gain one life whenever a black spell is being cast again it's this little thing but sometimes these lives can like grant you an extra turn or something so we've got our sangi vampires our juzum jins our soul canars of course we have the four hypnotic specters and then we also have the four sinkholes so this is really a deck that needs to have enough black mana there are enough black sources in here but i just want to point that out the main focus of the deck is black i guess the second color then is white so in in, in that perspective it's kind of a dead guy ale deck but with a lot of these splashes that we see quite a lot in old school and that is of course because it's so easy to make different color mana with city of brasses with all the dual lands with the black lotus in the deck with the moxen in the deck so it's not difficult to splash in other colors especially when those colors only require one of their color symbol like the blue power for example you only need one blue to cast them all you know i mean time twister is the most expensive one for one blue and two so you only need one blue mana and two other mana to cast it um, the same goes for example for lightning bolt which is kind of in here i guess red is kind of splashed in here isn't it we only see three red cards the three bolts but lightning bolt again a super card what i like about it in this matchup is that aryan can uh, play the lightning bolt on the atok as soon as it hits the board and then he's going to put david in a difficult position is he going to sack an artifact to keep it alive or is he going to let it die to the lightning bolt you know so i i like that like i said in the deck deck of the of the atok deck it's really nice if you can hurt the atok on the turn of the atok player itself so i think the 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 bolts could be very relevant in this matchup wow I've, I've said quite a lot in a short amount of time but i think we now have a good idea of both of the decks and that means we're ready let's go to round number four of the often troll cup david's atok bots versus the white swamp king here we go game number one here we go so on the left we have the atok bots player david and on the right we have aryan who's on the play he's playing with his uh, swamp king's ale so he's actually playing with quite a lot of white. It's a white black deck mainly and then he splashed red for the bolts and blue for the blue power. Let's take a look. I see a Mishra's workshop in hand there. It's going to play it out. Does he have maybe an Ankh of Mishra and a Vice? Does have the black Vice, two mana floating. There's the Ankh of Mishra. Oh, hoo -hoo, this hurts. That means two points of damage for Aryan. At least Aryan's on the play. But he's going to drop to 18. But the bigger problem, of course, is also that Ang, that every time he plays out of land, it's going to hurt him for two points of damage. Is that a Black Lotus there in the middle? That would be ideal. We could drop the Lotus and a land and maybe play that Sengir. Or, of course, go for the Hypnotic Spectre. I would personally go for the Sengir because the Hippie is so boltable. There we see a Strip Mine, so he's just going to strip first. Gonna strip the workshop, but I actually think the damage is already done. Yes, stripping the workshop is not a bad idea. Is he gonna play the Hypnotic Spectre? Ooh, this is very risky. This is risky because if David has a bolt in hand, he can just drop a mount and kill it with the bolt. There is a strip in the hands of David, so he can also consider stripping away. Exactly, there's the mountain. Are we gonna see a bolt? If he has a bolt, he can just pass a turn first no okay it's gonna see a mana vault so this is good news for Aryan. this is really good news for him he can now swing in and at least oh he's got a time walk so he can swing in twice this is gonna cost david two cards so Aryan gambled and the gamble actually paid off he's now gonna drop two more points gonna drop to 14. attack here whoa and he's gonna lose a card that's the most important part of it all so he's going to shuffle up and then he's probably going to play the time walk and he can attack again. So the mountain is gone, discarded here. Going to take an extra point of damage, going to go to 13. There is the time walk, so he's going to take an extra turn. Wow, this is grand. This is fantastic here for Arya in this whole scenario, top decking the time walk and then David not finding a bolt. He can now also play out another land, another factory and attack for three because he can then pump the factory that's going to animate. And the Ankh is doing a lot of work. I guess that's a silver lining here for David. 
Here, here's gonna animate choosing not to use the city. And that makes sense because it means he can still play the bolt next turn. So four points of damage. David dropping to 12 and he's gonna lose another card, another mountain. Ooh, that's kind of bad news for Aryan here. It's nicer to take, take out other cards. And there's a pass turn. Let's see what David can do. He's found another vice, but the vices don't really help. An Atok would be quite nice here for David, although, of course, Aryan has that bolt. But then at least you can use the vices as food for the Atok. Three cards in hand here. Of course, he needs to deal with the uh, Hypnotic Spectre, but I guess he didn't draw a bolt or else he would have bolted it straight away. And the reason to, to, in this case, if you have a bolt, bolt in your own turn, by the way, is because you don't know, uh, you know, the colors that Aryan is playing. Maybe, you know, he's playing with counter magic. He could top deck a second blue and then protect his hippie with a potential counter spell. You just don't know. So in this case, if I would have a bolt, I would play it in my own main. And it's hard to see that one card there. It doesn't seem to be a bolt. There's a strip mine, so at least, you know, the strip mine can deal with one of the lands. So I'm gonna go here for the city. That is interesting, and I was kind of expecting maybe to bolt in response, putting him on seven. But Aryan decided not to, perhaps because he's got a red sword in hand. Yeah, there's another city of brass in hand, so that makes sense. Now he also has that disenchant. He's going to animate, he's going to attack for four, and he's going to take out the last card in the hand of David. I mean, this is so going Aryan's way. This is fantastic for him and really bad for David. David losing a mountain here. David actually drew a lot of lands. And then also that mana vault, that's just bad luck. So he had quite a good opening there with the, uh, the vice and the egg. But after that, he kind of drew nothing else, just mountains and mana vaults. And that's not enough. So he's on six now. Remember, Aryan has that bolt, so he can bolt him down to three. First gonna untap and attack, it seems. That makes sense, by the way, to first attack and see if you can deal your four points of damage and then seal the deal. So there's the attack. Dave is gonna drop to two, gonna lose his card, and there is the bolt. And I think, I think the key moment in this game was when Aryan took the risk to use the Lotus, to cast Hypnotic Spectre. I, personally, I wouldn't have done it because it's so risky, but here you can see when it pays off, it pays off big, especially followed up by their turn with the Time Walk. That was just fantastic. Dealing with the entire hand of David. And of course, David was quite unlucky only finding mountains and mana vaults, it seemed, in that game number one. Anyway, both players are going to go into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's David on the play with his Atok deck after losing that first game. Here we see the hand of Aryan. Yeah, that's one really good reason to keep that hand. Ancestral Recall, but also a Soul Ring in hand. Two mana sources. Here we see the hand of David. It's a bit blurry. I believe I also saw a Soul Ring in there, a Chain Lightning, a Mountain. Let's see what he's going to do. Turn one, tapping the Mountain. There's the Soul Ring into a Vice. So again, there's that turn one Vice. That's when the Vice is the best. And look at that, Aryan taking two points of damage, so he probably took a mulligan there. So he went down to six. Against these decks, I, I'm, I always mull a little bit more. Okay, okay, it did go down to 17, so he didn't mull. Okay. Anyway, playing the Soul Ring here and passing the turn. So that makes sense now not to play out that Ancestral Recall because of that vice. So your first focus is going to be to empty the hand. And the Soul Ring is going to, going to really help Aryan doing that. Oh, it's going to be a turn two. Triskelion, this is insane. This is so good for David. Again, find that Mishra's Workshop, and especially in combination with the Soul Ring, that's just amazing value for him. Two points of damage here for Aryan dropping to 15. He does have that Divine Offering in hand, right, I believe. And of course, when he casts a Divine Offering in response, David will kill his own trike, but still, it takes care of the 4-4. It is an instant, so he doesn't have to do that now. 
He also has enough mana to just play out the Juzem Jin, by the way. I believe there's a Juzem Jin in hand. That would be quite cool also. Place a Divine Offering. Ooh, it's got to choose between the Vice and the Trike. It's going to go for the Trike. I mean, he could also choose the path to go for the Juzem Jin this turn, because you can use the Juzem to block the Trike. If that is a if that is a Jews, I'm in hand, but I believe it is. Anyway, two uh, points of damage now dealt. I don't really understand why he's gaining life here. Oh, I believe what's happening is David is making a mistake here. He's pointing the three points of damage towards Aryan, and then Aryan gains six life. So six life take away the three damage from the trike means three life. But what you can also do with with the Triskelion, it can shoot itself. So you can kill your own trike, use those other two counters at Aryan. So actually, if you play this the right way, Aryan should lose two life. That's why trike is, is such a good creature against uh, Divine Offering. Anyway, there's the strip mine on the Scrubland. And that's actually a pretty big deal. Because remember, Aryan wants to, uh, to play out the Juzem, but he needs double black for that. Does he have another black source? Did draw into a demonic tutor here. There is a Mishra's factory. He's kind of stuck at the moment. You know, that that strip mine on the scrubland was a very good move by David. Remember what I said in the deck deck of Aryan. Aryan needs double black to get his deck going. Sengir Vampire, Juzem Jin, Sinkhole, Hypnotic Spectre. They all need double black. White, blue, red, he only just needs one symbol of those and he's fine. So one city of brass fixes all of that for him. But black, he needs double. Passing the turn here. So this is a great turn for David. Because Aryan only dropped the land and passed. This is fantastic for him. But look at this. Aryan also not having any more steam, it seems. He did draw into a fireball, which could be good later in the game. Aryan only losing one life point to device, dropping to 16. I mean, he could consider attacking with the factory, but that's probably not a good move because then if David has a bolt, you're going to lose another another mana source. Could consider first playing out the demonic. He's going to play out a Mishra's factory instead. Very interesting. And he is going to animate. Attacking for two here. There we see the bolt. Is he now going to play out the Demonic? No, he's not. I wonder now if it actually is a Demonic Tutor. Maybe I didn't spot it well enough. You know, it's hard to see, but I'm trying to tell you what the cards there are in hand. I mean, it's very clear he is having a Swords in hand. And again, just a land and a pass by David, by the way. And one damage here for Aryan, and Aryan is drawing into an Hypnotic Spectre. He really needs another Black Source. Also has a Soul Canard, the Swamp King in hand. What I can see from here, if I'm correct, is a Soul Canard, the Swamp King, a Juzem Jin, an Ancestral Recall, a black card that I think is a Demonic Tutor, but I'm not quite sure, a Swords to Plowshares, and an Hypnotic Spectre. So he's got six cards in hand. I'm pretty sure he wants to empty his hand because you don't want to keep taking damage from the Vice. He's on 15 now. It looks like he wants to tap the City of Brass. That would mean he goes to 14, tapping the factory as well. It's gonna drop to 14. I mean, if that is a demonic tutor, it is. I would be tempted to just go for a land. Go for underground sea, for example. But it's it's a difficult decision. You usually you don't want to look up a land. But then again, you gotta do what you gotta do. Black Lotus could be a good choice as well, actually. Play a Lotus, and then you can play out the Juzam this turn. That would be pretty cool. So tempting. He is going for the Black Lotus, I believe. Oh, this is sweet. He's considering some other cards as well. This is just really nice. 
I do like the fact that Aryan is he's really lo using the Lotus, right? He's not afraid to go all in. And yes, you, you, there are a lot of scenarios where you use the Black Lotus and you're setting yourself up for a potential two for one, uh, which makes it difficult to play, but, but he's just going for it. There's Juice Amgen! Oh, that's awesome. So this 5-5 five, five powerhouse, and it does deal damage to you during your upkeep, but it's really uh, the poster boy of old school magic, especially of Arabian Nights. Such a beautiful card. I always imagine that little person he has in his hands is uh, the, the person you see on the Flying Man art. And here we see a trike by David, probably coming from the top of his deck. Point of damage here for Aryan, dropping to 13. Four cards in hand, so not taking any damage from the vice. It's really interesting and to see the power of the Black Vice in this matchup, right? Because now he's drawing into a Library of Alexandria, for example. It's just not that great. There, he's going to use the Swords to Plowshares. And again, David has to make a choice. Is he going to point three points of damage towards Aryan, or is he going to choose for the life gain? I guess with his deck, exactly, you want to shoot it at... Um, at Aryan, he is going to gain one life though, so he's going to go up to 21. There we see the Library of Alexandria tapping the library to activate the factory, attacking with both. Booning in seven points of damage, that is pretty brutal. David dropping to 14, he's on a two turn clock, did find a Chain Lightning. Problem with Chain Lightning is it's a sorcery, meaning you cannot cast it in the turn of your opponent. You cannot use it in this case to deal with the factory if he animates the factory next combat again, which is kind of annoying. It's one of the reasons I'm not a super fan of Chain Lightning. I do believe Chain Lightning should be part of this deck of David, by the way. Interesting. So pointing out a chain and then a fireball for two. Yeah, this is a two for one. That must be kind of frustrating for David, but you have to do what you have to do. If he would have just had one land more, he could have killed it with just using the Fireball. I do think this is a good decision by David because you don't want to take 5 damage again. Tapping this City of Brass. Gonna go to 9. There's the Ancestral Recall. And there's the Red Elemental Blast, so that's a good answer. So Red Elemental Blast doing what it's supposed to do. There's the Animate attacking for two. David tapped out, passing the turn back to David. He's on 12 at the moment. It's looking pretty good for Aryan. He's not there yet though, and he's on nine. And he's still struggling with finding double black. Cannot play the, ooh, there's the Scrubland. This is gonna make a dent. This is gonna make an impact. There's the Scrubland. I mean, I think I would cast Hypnotic here. You know, just because you... Yeah, exactly. You also want to animate, put the pressure on. And if he has a Bolt, he's probably going to use it on the Factory, meaning that in your second main, you can kind of play out your Hippie. It's kind of safe, because if he, if he had a Bolt, he would have used it on the Factory. So I really like this line of play by Aryan. There is the Bolt, though, but still. I mean, what somebody top deck she cannot control, but at least this one thing you controlled... Is the safest possible way, and if you play the Sangir, then you wouldn't have had that two points of extra damage. So I understand this, and you know, an active Hypnotic Spectre can really close the door on, on David's chances. I mean, if you're David, you're just hoping just to maybe get a Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune would be fantastic, actually. And I think what he's thinking now is, do I want to point my three points of damage on Aryan, who's on eight, and lose the mountain, who cares? Or should I try just to stay alive long enough to maybe draw into that Wheel of Fortune? There's the mountain. Okay, you can actually play that out, so he's not going to lose a card. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. I think the double black is, is the reason why Aryan is going to win this here in game two. Underground Sea now. Now he's finding everything. He can actually cast Soul Canard the Swamp King now. That is pretty cool. He can animate the factory. Swing in first. 
Ooh, this is interesting. Is this before combat? I mean, playing it on the hit beat, I think I would have waited till the last moment to make up my mind. Doesn't matter much though. I do understand this decision. So he's gonna drop to eight. There's the Soul Conor, the Swamp King. And you see the gesture by Aryan, he's really happy. I think there's only one card that can save David here, which is a Wheel of Fortune. A Wheel of Fortune, and then if he gets two burn spells? No, it's a Mana Vault, that's it. It seems to be in the back. Well, I mean, he can deal seven points of damage. So David has one more turn. There's the animate, attack for seven. It's going to drop to one. He can follow it up. Yeah, I wonder, should you take the damage? Exactly, I think Arjen's making a good decision here. You're already winning. Don't get greedy. Don't take that extra point. You never know if it matters. Is that a Wheel of Fortune? Is it a Wheel of Fortune? No, it's a Suchi. That is too bad. I was hoping for a wheel. I always want to have game number threes in here, but it just wasn't meant to be today. So even though it's a 2-0 victory for Aryan, David came really, really, really close to winning it as well. And uh, it was it was a great match. Thank you, David, and thank you, Aryan, for showing your skills right here on Timmy Talks and uh, playing on the live stream at the Often Troll Cup. So, wow. So if you enjoyed this match, please give the channel a like. That really, really helps the channel move forward. And also have a look at patreon.com slash timmytalks to find out how you can support me as a creator. Uh, it already starts, the support program already starts with $1 a month. So that is like nothing. And the cool thing is you're getting some nice perks in return. You get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video, including this one. But before I go to the end scroll, I would just like to point out to if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe and ring that bell because then you will be notified when I post a new match from this tournament because next week we're gonna continue with more content from the Often Troll Cup. We're gonna go to round number five and that's gonna be an exciting one, I can already tell you that. And for now, we're gonna go to the end scroll. Somebody can see.